So in this video, I'm going to do a couple of upgrades to my Dell Precision T7500. This is a Xeon workstation. It actually has two CPUs in it, and each of those CPUs has six cores. But uh, there are some things on this machine that need some upgrades, the first of which being this. Now, if you've paid attention to my channel, you might have seen the unboxing of this. A uh, little PCI Express card here, but this is a SATA PCI Express card that's going to upgrade the SATA speeds on this machine from SATA 2 to SATA 3. So that's going to help with the drive communication with the motherboard. Another upgrade I'm going to do on this machine is this hot swap rack. Now this actually fits into one of these drive bays and it's going to allow me to take either a 2.5 inch or a 3.5 inch drive and just stick it right in there for quick easy access. So over on the side here you just have this latch that you push out and you can open up the computer and access the innards that way. So I'm just going to remove this piece of plastic here and that's going to allow me to access the expansion bays in here. Now it looks like I can use what's considered slot number four here, which is closest to the graphics card, or I could use slot number six up here. But because I don't have a need for both slots at this point, again, I might in the future if I do future upgrades, but at this point, I don't need to use both slots, so I'm going to use the one that's going to give the graphics card the most breathing room. Because if I use this slot right here, it's going to be very close to the intake fans on the graphics card. And although this PCI Express card is extremely small, the one that I'm installing, I don't really want to obstruct anything. This is the size of the card, it's very tiny. So at this point in the game, I'm going to be using slot number six, which is this one up here, just so that there's enough room in there. But again, that might change in the near future. What I'm gonna to have to do is remove one of these back pieces here to allow the card to be installed. Now, the card doesn't have any external ports on it, but this is how the card is gonna be locked into place. So I believe it's the second one here. And everything is toolless in this machine, which is really nice. So I'm just going to push this blue piece back, as you can see, and then I can lift this piece right out. Now, you might notice that the slot is quite large there, but I only have two little connectors here. Not to worry, it will still work. So let's just get this thing situated here, and then push it into place. There we go. Very easy. And now I'm just going to push from the back, push this blue piece back in, and it's locked down into place. Now this card is going to give me SATA 3 connectivity with the motherboard. And it actually has four SATA ports on it. There are two here, and then two facing forward here. Now before I turn on the computer and install the drivers for this card I just installed, we're going to put this into the machine. So one of the awesome benefits of working with a toolless machine is again, you don't have to use any tools, at least for the most part. So right here is a lever. We're going to push this lever down and it's going to pop the front bezel off. So let's see if I can do this without obstructing your vision of it. So I'm just going to push this down here and it's going to pop this off. Let's see if I can grab this. There we go. As you can see, it comes right off. So what we want to do is remove one of the drive bay covers. So what I'm probably going to do is, this is the optical bay, I'm going to take this one out here. So on the back here, you'll see that you can actually remove a piece by pinching this in and just pulling it out. And of course, you want to save all your pieces just in case you want to put them back in. So that's done. The next step in the process is you have this, which is actually in place, and we might actually have to get the tools out for this. I'm going to need to remove this screw up here. 
So I'm just going to grab my screwdriver here and we're going to pull this screw out. So let's see if this will come out now. There we go. A little cover there, has a little tab on it. So the screw from the end that I just pulled out here, I don't know if you can see it, but the threads only come up some of the way and then there's actually a spacer. There's actually a screw on the other side of this, just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that screw as well and I'm gonna put it into the hot swap bay that we're going to be putting in here. So the reason we're gonna put this screw into this guy right here is because there's a trench here and it's gonna help stabilize this little hot swap bay that we're gonna be putting in. And it's a good thing because you do want it stabilized because you're actually putting in drives in here like an old Nintendo cartridge. So you want it as stable as possible. So for the best stability, I think we're gonna be using this screw hole here for the top here. So we're gonna use the one of the rear screw holes on the bottom on the other end. That way it gives it a little more balance. So let's see if I can get it started here. So there we go. Now you do have two options with this. You can use the Molex power connector or a SATA power connector. So after checking out the machine a little bit more, I realized I am going to use the Molex power connector because it's closest. I do have both options but uh, it is the closest one. Back here, we're gonna use one of these cords that we, if you saw my last upgrade video, you saw that I had these uh, SATA cords here that kind of match the interior. We're gonna take one of these ends and we're gonna plug it straight in to the back of this. And there you go. Now, I do have a right angle end on the other end here and that's gonna plug into the card that we just installed. So I'm just gonna slide this through back here, then we're going to slide this hot swap bay in here. We're going to take the original screw that was in here and I'm going to mount it down. There we go. And it does rattle a bit, so I am going to use that second screw here. Now fortunately this does come with some screws, so I'm just going to use one of these to bolt it down there. There we go. And it's pretty tight in there. It does do a little wiggling, but there's no way for me to attach it on the other side. And that really has nothing to do with this expansion at all. It has everything to do with the, uh, the way this computer is configured. So I've done everything I can on this end, so we might as well put the bezel back on here. And it should snap back into place here. So the next step in this process is something you're probably not going to be able to see, because I can't get my camera in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this Molex connector right here. This is a power connector coming off of the power supply here. And I'm going to plug it into the back of the hot swap bay that we just installed here. So the next step in this process is to connect the SATA cord from the hot swap bay into the card we installed. Now, the problem is, is that this is a right angle cord and uh, we have the fans on the graphics card up top on the graphics card here. So I have to make sure that this is not gonna interfere with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of route it behind some of these other cords here up top here, I don't know if you can see that, but it should give it some restraint. Let's see if this will work here. I'm gonna plug this in to this port right here. I don't know if you can see it, but right there. There we go, snapped into place. And as you can see, there's clearance there on the fans on the graphics card. Now hopefully gravity is not going to pull that down. I am going to do my best to pull this back so that uh, there isn't a problem. But the great thing about the fan is that it's going to make a physical noise if anything ever tries to obstruct it. So here we go. This is what we just installed up front here. 
and uh, I wish I could have mounted it from the left side here, but uh, unfortunately I can't. But it's sturdy enough in there, as you can see me pressing over here, over here, a little bit of movement, but again, it's mounted down very nice and tight on this side, so it's not going to be a problem. You know, I'm just going to be putting drives in here and pulling them out, and then of course turning this on and turning it off on this end. Now, the PCI Express card came with its own driver disc here. Now, generally, you know, a driver disc is a little more outdated than what you can find online, but it's a good source for a driver if you need it. Preferably, find it online. But um, I fired up this computer, as you can tell, it's fired up right now. And what I did is I wanted to install the driver for the PCI Express card so that it would work and make sure that I have the correct drivers. I am running Windows 10 on this machine and it recognized the PCI Express card without me having to install any drivers. Now, the question is, is it running at SATA 3.0 speeds or is it running at SATA 2.0 speeds? Now, as you can see, I actually did put a hard drive into the hard drive hot swap rack that we just installed and everything works properly. The hot swap bay here is the only thing connected to the PCI Express card that we installed in this video. The main SSD is still connected to the motherboard the way it was originally through SATA 2. So I'm going to run AS SSD benchmark on the main SSD plugged in as it is now through SATA 2. And then I'm going to run the same benchmark with the SSD plugged into the PCI Express card that we installed here. Now, the main SSD on this machine is this one right here. So I just want to trace the cord back, and it is plugged into the motherboard, and it's plugged in right here. So, let me see if I can remove that. I don't know if these have tabs on them. But let's see if I can remove it from here. It's kind of a tight spot in here. There we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dislodge this cord from the clip here so I can plug it in to this. I don't know where I'm going to plug it in. Maybe here, here. I don't know. We'll see. So I kind of have to spin this cord around a bit, but it will fit. And just attach it right there. There we go. So now the main drive here is connected to the SATA 3 card and we have two empty connectors. Now, it's worth noting that a, a regular hard drive, no matter if it's a brand new hard drive or an old one like this one, it's not going to take advantage of the SATA 3 speeds. So there's no use in using this in conjunction with this here. Of course, if your motherboard only supports SATA 3, then that's fine, you use that. But uh, since I have four uh, I think four, maybe a couple more SATA ports on this motherboard that are SATA 2.0. I'll just stick with the hard drive and the replacement hard drive on the motherboard and then use only devices that can take advantage of the SATA 3 speeds on here. Now I do have a second SSD in here, but once I upgrade the drive, this will no longer be in here. Now here are the two benchmarks side by side. And you'll notice for the most part, the speeds are much higher on SATA 3, which is on your right. The SATA 2 speeds are on your left. In fact, if you look at the scores, they're approximately double, if not a little bit more. As far as read speeds, it's almost double. As far as write speeds, it's actually triple. And the total score is almost double. So this was definitely a smart thing to do to upgrade the speeds on this machine. So as always, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And if you want to help out my channel, you can give me a thumbs up. You can share this video on your favorite social media, or you can actually join my Patreon, all of which is greatly appreciated. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.